Hi there, welcome to Root Stem. And in this video, we are going to be painting up this orc noble on a squig. Hi guys, thank you very much for joining me. Please like, consider liking, sharing and subscribing once you've done watching the video. We've got a lot more content coming and of course we do have battle reports. In today's video, we're going to be painting up this squig with this rider. Um, I'm not, still not quite sure, I'll put it up on the screen. I'm not going to actually call this because I don't collect the orcs. This is part of a commission. Uh, and we're going to be using a variety of different techniques to achieve this look. We're going to be using some airbrush we're going to be using some layering we're going to be using some contrast paint because why not we need to try and get this thing ready on the tabletop but also make it look good and do it quick right let's get cracking so the first thing that we're going to make sure is that we've got each particular component separate we don't want the uh, actual rider to be in the same spot as the you know on the beast because we want to be able to paint them individually now what i've done is to uh, spray this one with chaos black and this of course the orc is sprayed with mechanica standard gray that's mainly because the colors that we're going to be using react better in my personal opinion to these particular undercoats this orc uh this rider this squig sorry is going to be painted up with a red we're possibly going to be doing trying to do a very pale underbelly if we can get that and the orc itself is going to be mainly greens with some beige trousers there's going to be some blacks on there but we're going to add those later on so that is why at the moment it's mechanica standard gray because we're kind of with mechanica standard gray i'm going to be able to get a better looking green and of course i much prefer to do red with a black undercoat we are going to be using an airbrush for a lot of this um some of the base colors that we're going to be using for this guy is going to be corn red we're then going to be highlighting that corn red with some Evil Sun Scarlet. Possibly then go on to an Evil Sun Scarlet dry brush. And then we will then go on to a Fire Dragon bright dry brush as well, just to finish it off. So onto the orc boy, we've got some Talan sand in the airbrush. Oh, the orc knob. And we're going to uh, airbrush the trousers in. Back to the giant sort of squig, we are going to be putting, it's going to be kind of difficult, so I'll be honest with you, what I shouldn't have done is base them. Um, so if you can get away with not basing it, that's fine. We're going to put, we've got some uh, Carrick Stone, and we're just going to put a kind of like a line, like an underbelly, on the actual model. Back to the up, oh, and I'm just going to put some seraphin sepia on the airbrushed trousers. And we're going to seraphin sepia the whole of the squig. So now I've got a Gene Steeler purple, and I'm just going to kind of like do his mouth with that so we can kind of get the lips. Just make it a little different now we've got the washes dry. Onto some flesh, we've got some warpstone glow loaded and we are ready. We've actually covered this. This is the MIG Ammo's masking putty. I'm finding it very useful at the moment. Although it can be some heavy, so if you put it on, you need to make sure that you've readjusted it so that you can still, you know, you're not going to spray parts you're not supposed to spray. Thank you. 
Now that the green is finished and dried, let's get some wash on. We're going to use Oak Flesh Wash, the contrast paint. Yes, I know. Um, and we're going to use that kind of like as a all over shade. This is kind of like an old school way of, of painting the oaks. This is a uh, one that I used to, apart from the airbrush, of course, but one that I used to use as a youngin. But I actually think it was still called Oak Flesh Wash as well at the time. Maybe the old ink that you used to be able to put all over the old oaks. Make sure there's no pooling. Keep it all nice. And then we'll come back in. So back onto the Evil Sun Scarlet now that the whole model has been washed. We're going to just dry brush so we're effectively dry brushing a color that's already been on there it will now pick up so be selective we're not dry brushing the whole thing mainly at the top i've got a large dry an old large dry brush from games workshop for, for this just make sure that the whole not the whole model, but you give majority of the upper portions of red a dry brush. Just avoiding that little bit of purple, it doesn't matter if you get some red on it though. And avoiding the cream on the belly. And now we're going to do a very light dry brush of Fire Dragon Bright. Try to pick your spots with it, don't, don't do it all over. So onto the Noble, we're gonna kinda of do a similar thing. We're gonna get some Warpstone Glow and we're going to dry brush it across the green that we've actually done. If it's a very tight sort of area, try dry brushing with a smaller brush. It's got quite a large brush here. And if the area is hard to reach, just don't, don't do it because of course that's going to be in shadow. Now, it's not just one layer of dry brushing that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing an up and down motion, I suppose. We're also going to be doing a, uh, a couple, so once you've done one, put some more paint on your dry brush and go back in and do it again until you build up a colour that you like. But you'll also notice that you will, kind of, you will get a nice progressive bit of shading going from the recesses up to the main guy. This is so we can keep it quick and easy while painting as well. The idea with it, you know, if you're airbrushing and dry brushing, you're wanting these things on the tabletop as quick as you possibly can. And then we kind of add a final high brush of moot green, just gently, just picking up the raised areas. See, that's just picking up the masculinity of the orc nicely. A bit of a belly rumble there, I think it's time for some din dins. Don't worry too much about any sort of what if it looks a bit powdery, your varnish step will kind of eliminate that anyway. So we've got the dry brush done now. What we'll do here is pick out, I've gone back to the Gene Steeler Purple and we have, I've watered it down quite considerably. And I'm just going to pick out bits of this lid. Keep it nice and thin in case you, you know, use it too much, but you also want that. You don't want to be spoiling any of the. Uh, transitions that you've been creating with the airbrush. So we've now added a tiny bit of Emperor's Children into the Gene Steel Purple, which is going to give us a nice little bit of a highlight. I'm just going to do these as like striation marks. 
down. Not going everywhere. Putting black shoulder pads in there, I know the original ones have got white, but this is for a golf clan, so for me, I'm going to be adding a lot more black, possibly to the shoulder pads, and then maybe putting some white, sort of like teeth marks and things of that nature in there. That will just give it, make it sure that it kind of fits in with the rest of the golf tribe. And then, of course, I've got um, some black on here. Again, just trying to tie the weapons in to everything else. I've already gone and done the squig, as you can see. Try to get my focus there. There we are. Uh, I've already started to do the black and the highlighting on the black, which is what I'm going to basically just state to you now. So black's blocked in. We're going to get some Dark Reaper, one of my favourite colours to highlight black with. And what we're going to do, we're going to just use the old school dry brushing technique. Just brushing Dark Reaper on the brush, and using a small dry brush from Gameplay. This is the one with the flatter edges. Uh, I prefer to use flatter ones because sometimes I'm wanting to pick up edges. So if you're kind of doing a lot of edge work, because a lot of people say, oh, well, you're supposed to this on the other. But with these flatter ones, it will, I find the pick up edges better. So I'm just kind of looking for those edges. And I'm just kind of dry brushing it in. Now it's not a very strong color. Um, so you won't actually get a lot of um, pigment on there. I suppose it is a strong colour, you're not, dry brushing wise, it's not that dissimilar to the dark, so you're just going to get kind of a nice hint of the Dark Reaper. to dry brush everything on that maybe just pick up bits right so I've gone in and cut in some of the uh, white well I mean by that it's painted well I'm going to start with Ulfran Grey we're going to kind of shade Ulfran Grey now with some apothecary wine I'm going to do that as an all over sort of wash so we're just going to make sure you don't get any of it on the green This will do. It's actually a really good way of shading white. It's, it's very much like an off grey. Now, once you've done all this, we are then going to add, and then we cut it in. We're kind of like kind of doing a bit of a highlight, as it were, with some white. Scar. I thinned it down so it'll be quite translucent. Translucent. What we're going to do is we're going to just put a couple of layers on just to make sure it's got the right sort of look that we're after. We'll get over a couple of layers and it should kind of highlight itself. This one will dry a little bit more grey, the one will be more pure white. Good, now what we need is some brown leather. So, what we're going to be using is good old Rhinox Hide. Uh, we're going to be layering that up with some Doom Ball Brown and then layering that up as a final highlight with some Scrag Brown. You've probably seen me do this before. Um, I do have a video that's just dedicated to me doing leather. So what you're probably going to do, what I'm probably going to do here, is just block it in, paint it in, and just show you the process of what I go through. It's all done on wet palette, so I'll get cracking.
So on the leather parts, I've gone ahead and used some Doom Ball Brown, just thinned it down and applied it, as you can possibly see, into the leather sections. All right, so that's the more visible on that one. And what we're gonna do now is to simply, there you go, get some Scrag Brown, we're gonna water it down, make sure we've got a great consistency, that's what I'm looking for. If you think you've got a little too much in your brush, just tap it against some tissue. Pick out the edges of this leather. Just what I've, like I've just basically going over what I've already done with the doom ball, just reinforcing it with the scrag. Okay. Now with me applying the uh, doom ball, and then of course we've got the scrag on top. You can see, giving it a nice bit of effect. We're just going to go over it. I've got an old um, layer brush, base brush, small base brush, and I'm just going over all of the leather that we've just done with some seraphin sepia. So, on to our next stage. As you can see, I've already prepped the silver. So, I've painted up the areas that I'm wanting to be metal. Um, and then we are just going to do a simple wash, just basically go over every bit of silver that you've done with some classic Null Oil. Next up, we're just going to highlight the silver with some Stormhorst. Nice and run. All I'm going to do is kind of pick little bits that I'm just wanting to accentuate with a little bit of the silver. Now our silver is nicely done. We're going to do a little tiny bit of pre-prep. So I've got some wraith bone here because of course I'm going to use a little bit of contrast paint to speed this up. And we've got some Ushabti bone. Now Ushabti bone is going to be for the teeth on the orc and of course the teeth on here. Just make sure that those gets painted up with the, with the Ushabti. The wraith bone, we are going to use it to try and create a nice warm effect on here. So paint any sort of like strappings um, that the art will have. And then we're gonna be using, also do any sort of bone, any bone here. And then we're gonna be using Gracia, the other contrast paint base coat, to do his kind of the, the kind of bare sort of like, or the squig-like skin that's actually on his back. Now, I believe, I think in the original box is purple. I think that's what we're gonna be going for. So yeah, just, get those prepped. So there's mainly been contrast painting now. I've kind of skipped ahead. I've got a slightly older brush for this. Um, as you can see, I mean, that one was painted with Spirit Seer. That's been painted with Yashopti Bone and this has been uh, painted with Wraith Bone. I've already gone ahead and done the gray. That's Space Wolf gray just on the um, actual sort of like skin. I didn't want to do it, I know it's supposed to be a squig skin, but I didn't want to do it more red because of course you're going to get a lot of red with the uh, ride, with the actual ride itself, with the squig itself, so I didn't really want to accentuate that. Um, I've painted in of course a bit of his mouth and we're just going to use some skeleton hoard and we're just going to put that on everything that we've got ready. I'm trying to go against sort of like a bit of a grain there, uh, not they always say slap it on, but if you put way too much on, you, yeah, you get tired marks and it looks horrible. If you do accidentally put too much on like I'm doing there, just use the brush to suck some of it back up. Just make sure that you get all of that bone. Now hopefully, fingers crossed with the uh, different colours that we've used underneath. Sure, guys. Slightly different looking. It should give us a slightly different bow and it should give us a slightly different looking wrap. All right, we're starting to crack on properly now. There we go, that's a bit better. Now, as you can see, we've got the nice bit of wrappings done. 
Um, I still need to do the teeth on those of brass. And any of the bone bits, I'm actually only closing this teeth, I'm gonna go over with your shapty bone. Uh, just like, kind of like very thin, sort of put some streaks in there just to sort of accentuate it, bring it up, make it look a little better than what it currently is. The rest of it is coming along fine. We're nearly done with this chap. The mount, again, we're gonna have to do um, the teeth. I'm gonna put some Yushabdi bone into there. And what I've done is to paint the uh, saddle with some Talan. Oh no, I didn't paint it with Talan sand. Oh yes, I did paint it with Talan sand, but did I? Look at me telling porky pies, I'll put it away. And then I went to bed and then I've got it back open, yeah. Right, so that's steel legion drab. We're gonna come in with some Talan sand to do a bit. I'm actually gonna airbrush like a highlighter. And then what I'm thinking of doing is maybe using that Grexler shade through the airbrush as well. I'm gonna use a really, really thin nozzle. I'm gonna try to be as careful as I possibly can. So just in case, I have actually masked this off with the masking tape from uh, MIG Ammo. Um, I got that from uh, Hobby Workshop. Quite a good deal on that. And then I'm gonna just kind of airbrush the, uh, the seat. Okay, so. Coming on nicely now, I've got part of the actual base painted. I've got him glued in and glued down. I think it's about time we finish this. And here we have the finished article. Uh, base done, bit of dual effect on there. I'll show you how to do that in a later video. And it didn't, it wasn't too bad, wasn't too difficult, especially when you're using a combination of different materials, different techniques, never really takes that much time. Well, thank you very much for watching, guys. Please like, share, subscribe, hit that notification button if you do want to see more. If you've got any more suggestions or particular videos you are wanting me to do, put them down in the comments below and I'll try and get round to doing like a painting tutorial on it. Don't get me wrong, these are not Golden Demon winning figures, but they do look good on most tabletops. So thank you very much, guys. Leave those comments for what you want to see next, and we'll see you next time.